Hello, I am back from Frankfurt, which was really nice. I spent a week there with my mom and I had a lot of fun. I walked so much. I usually don't use a lot of public transportation when I travel because I really like to walk. And it was very nice weather, so we went also swimming. There are many cool swimming pools in Frankfurt. I was born and raised there. I used to go to school there and the French school. So Frankfurt is a city in Germany, which is the financial center of Europe. It's a very clean and green city with loads of beautiful architecture. And yeah, I was born there, so I kind of like it. I haven't been there in a couple of years now. I used to have a friend that was living there, but she moved uh, to Shanghai first and she's now living in Paris. So I don't really get to go there anymore because my mom left Frankfurt nine years ago, but I've been wanting to go back just for old time's sake for a while And so yeah, we planned this trip with my mom and yeah, it was very enjoyable It was such a nice break I really needed a good break and the weather was just incredible It was really warm and hot and sunny maybe a little bit too warm But to be honest when you travel it's nice when it's sunny and not raining and yeah, it, it was awesome And what I usually do when I go to when I travel and most people Specifically when I travel to Germany is to go to art supplies shop because I really like them So I bought a few things. I also went into bookstores So I have a few things to share and show you. So first off I bought this book, which is an insect guide It's in German, but the names are in Latin as well. It's just full of really good pictures I've been looking for good books about insects for quite some time because currently what I do is I search on Google and on Pinterest to find good pictures of insects and then when I find an insect I like I try to find more pictures about that specific insect and so it all goes through the computer but I personally prefer working with books simply because when you work and you have a computer screen it's just tiring I, I find it tiring to have it I find it so much easier to have a book just near your working space and just go on and sculpt or paint or whatever so I really enjoy having books I, I'm starting to have quite the collection about nature related books which I actually plan to show you in future videos because I, I find books so helpful and I think it also helps a lot for artists sometimes I'm under the impression that other artists are especially aspiring artists shy away from references or books because they think they're going to plagiarize the book or the photographs which is of course a risk and something you have to keep in mind and you have to work around it but references books especially if you work on very specific animals or materials that is not easily available for you in your daily life then I mean it's you cannot go without them so I do have a lot of books and to be honest I don't think I would go very far without them I really like that you have different stages of the same insects you don't always see that in books the second book I bought is about the sea life in the Mediterranean Sea it's really good because it's lots of corals and lots of sea slugs and fishes but especially corals I've been looking for books about underwater life for quite some time there are none where I live I'm always looking in our local bookshops because I feel like that kind of books you really want to see them before buying them and so I've been searching for them for quite a while I've also looked up Amazon I tend to shy away from ordering too much books online because you don't always see how it is inside and so it's really difficult to be sure of what you buy whereas when you can actually look into the book sometimes you think oh this book the the size is too small the pictures are not going to be enough but when I see that book it's like really good the pictures are actually fairly big and they are sharp which is really important especially sea life often you see good pictures but they're slightly unsharp or kind of blurry or the colors are kind of off so it can be really disappointing so this is this is like a really good book so I'm really happy both are from Cosmos, which is German edition and this book also comes in different languages so you have the German name of course the Latin name but also in French Italian and in Spanish 
And of course I went to an art supply shop. Now you have to keep in mind that I have been doing art and collecting art supplies for over 17 years now, maybe more. And so nowadays when I go to art supply shop it is in it's usually very specific what I look for. Either it is something I lack or one supply that I finished and then I'm going to replace or something that I feel I need, but it's it's not like huge hole. I don't really do huge holes. I, I think I never did, to be honest. I've been really liking the Golden Open acrylic paint. I'm going to say it's French-wise, Kinacridon Magenta. I love Kinacridon. Kina, Kina Crydon maybe, I don't know how you pronounce it in English. It is a pigment that I love and that I have many other acrylic paints with that pigment base. However, I really love the Golden Open, so they are super expensive and I would not recommend them if you're just starting out with acrylic paint because it's very high quality of course, but you can also buy slow drying mediums and add them to student grade acrylic paint if you want to try that out. However, I've tried them out because I wanted to have more of an oil painting feel. Uh, acrylics, they tend to dry really fast, which is fine if you work very fast or if you work in an abstract way, or even for backgrounds. I usually, all my backgrounds are regular acrylic paints, but all the fine details and so on, I've started to use the Golden Open and I'm hooked. So I had bought like five or six different uh, colors. Um, I had some red and I thought, okay, that's going to be enough. I'm, I can still use the other one. You can mix them with regular acrylics. But of course they dry faster if you mix the open ones to regular ones. And so I always got frustrated with the pinks because it would dry so much faster. So I decided to buy one tube of it, which was really expensive, <laughs> but I'm really happy I have it. Now the next thing I bought are these watercolor Anyway, so I bought this three. I actually have the ultramarine, ultramarine, ultramarine. I actually have the ultramarine finest already, but I've been using it a lot. So I thought might as well have an extra. This is the Schminke watercolor that I own. I got it for Christmas from my mom. It was a box with 24 spots but only 12 colors. So I already bought a few extra colors because I like to pick the colors I like so it's nice to have like normal colors but then I usually add the colors I'm interested in. And so I've been slowly adding them up and I bought two new ones. One is Cobalt Turquoise and the other one is Cobalt Violet Hue and they looked really nice so I'm I got them. I usually, if I want to buy Schminke, Schminke is a German brand and you can find it in France but it's a lot more expensive in France than in Germany. I feel like I'm a bit stubborn about it but I really like Schminke even though I know they are very good French brands like Sennelier. But to be honest I really like Schminke and so I tend to go to Germany very often since my parents live in Berlin and so I like to buy Schminke and I just buy it in Germany because it's so much cheaper there than here. I also bought four empty ones. So I bought last year in London some Daniel Smith extra fine watercolors and so I really wanted to have those tiny uh, square things where you can put the watercolor in because this is in tube and so I just wanted to put it in there and every time I would buy online for art supplies I needed I would forget it or they were not in stock and so when I saw them I was like okay I'm just going to grab four. I bought last year three Daniel Smith ones, two Alizarine and another Kinacridon, which again I really love. And I really like to buy reds usually because reds can differ so drastically from one brand to another and I always feel like the reds it's something that is so elusive. And I also have some Opera pink which is also Kinacridon, Kinacridon, I don't know how you say it in English, <laughs> um, that I got from, from a very good friend. Sugar Charm Shop actually. It's Holbein Artist watercolor so it's also good quality and again I just want to put it in there so I can actually use it because right now it's always kind of I'm putting it on 
where I can, it's just not working. The last thing I bought is this tiny watercolor palette for traveling. So it's um, it looks like a schminke, but it's actually from Busner, the brand, the shop, I think at least. Not sure. I bought a small one. What usually happens when I travel is I take the big one and then I'm too lazy to <laughs> transport it because it's kind of heavy. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try and get this small one and I will see if this actually motivates me to use it more, watercolors on the go, because it's smaller and lightweight. So we'll see how about that. And it also fits smaller purses a little bit better. It, it's smaller than a phone, which is sad. Phones are so big nowadays. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm not sure I'm going to use it for traveling, but I will use it to stock the tiny squares that I have, because right now I have already one too much to fit in the bigger box. So I'm going to link down below all everything I bought so you can check it out yourself. It's not cheap art material, it's not something that I would recommend if you are just starting out. I feel like if you're just start, it's nice to have really good pigments if you can afford them. So if you can, by all means go. But if you can't, I mean, it's okay, you can do really good art with uh, cheaper art supplies that might be as well good. I tend to stick with brands that I like and then just, you know, replace the colors that I have used up or that I'm missing. And yeah, I find it really nice. And since I do sell my artwork, I do want to have the best pigments because I know people are going to put it on their wall and I want it to be something that lasts over the years. And just a bonus, a book I bought at the Central Station in Frankfurt. It's called The History of Bees. It's by Maya Lunde, which is a Norwegian. And I haven't finished it yet. I uh, only gotten halfway, but it's a really good book. It's science fiction and it's about bees dying and how people are coping with it. And it's basically, it's happening at three different times of history of humanity. And it's really interesting. You can actually learn a lot about bees about it. It's also just really well written. So I'm just putting it in there since I bought that. And to wrap up this video, we are now in summer and my views dropped significantly, which I understand. I feel like it's beautiful out there. People want to go outside take the sun and do some picnics, go at the beach or swimming or whatever. So I'm probably going to take it a little bit slower with my YouTube channel over the two next months, so July and August. I'm, I want to still post at least one video a week just to have some consistency, but I'm probably going to take a bit of a break myself because I do need to find a new balance between my work and my life. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe. Consider become a patron over on Patreon. Thank you to all my patrons to help me out financially and to support me. Your financial aid is such a huge help to me, so thank you so much. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.